The 18th of December 1921 was an exciting day in Nagasaki, Japan, as at the Musubichi shipyard, the brand new battleship Tosa was preparing for launch. The hull was successfully launched and prepared for fitting out, but three months later, it would be cancelled as a result of the Washington Naval Treaties, and the Tosa's fate was sealed. It was to be used as a target ship, and eventually scuttled. Tosa's design in many respects was highly impressive for the Imperial Japanese Navy. The ship would mount 10 16.1 inch guns for the main battery armament, which had yet to be seen on a warship. Its armor scheme was new for the Navy as it incorporated an inclined main belt and a new method of armoring the main deck, which would be capping off the armor belts, effectively creating a lid and the torpedo defense system would use a three-layer aired system. Special attention had also been placed into the structure surrounding the ship's bow and stern, as on previous Japanese capital ships, these were weak spots. So, reality is, it made sense the Japanese decided to use this new design for target testing, as it would tell the Japanese whether these new applications were effective or defective. Special attention during these tests would be placed into the torpedo defense system, as warheads on torpedoes and mines were increasing in power, and thus the Japanese needed to make sure that their newest warships in the foreseeable future would be able to resist hits from these newer weapons. To start off the test, five external explosions were used, three torpedoes and two mines. Four of these would be focused around the main battery magazines, two of which, one on port, one on starboard around the forward magazines, and the other two, one on starboard, one on port around the amidships magazines, where the torpedo defense system was considered strongest. The fifth explosion was a shallow mine placed on the starboard side of the ship ahead of the torpedo defense system to test the structure of the forward end of the ship. By the time all was said and done, 5,092 tons of water had entered the ship. Initially, it took on a two-degree list to port, but this eventually went five degrees to starboard with continued explosions, with a total change of eight degrees. So luckily, Tosa did survive the five explosions. Albeit, these were separated between port and starboard, so the ship naturally counter-flooded, and thus, if all five were focused on one side, the story might not be so clean. These tests clearly showed the Japanese designers that the torpedo defense system that they were currently using was highly inadequate for modern torpedoes and mines, and thus this would have to be addressed in future designs if ships were to survive torpedo and mine hits in active combat. You can learn a little bit more about future Japanese torpedo defense system tests in my video on developing the Shokaku class, which I will link in the comments below. In line with battleships of its era, Tosa had torpedo rooms and torpedo tubes, albeit these were fixed in position, and the Japanese decided to place torpedoes within this room and detonate them to see how the structure of the ship would be affected in the event this happened in actual combat. The results from this test were devastating. The torpedoes' explosions within the torpedo room annihilated the upper structure of the ship above the waterline, and since the torpedo room was located just ahead of the number 1 and 2 41 centimeter main battery turrets, there's a high probability those two turrets would have been taken out of action in the event that happened during combat. This flaw would be corrected by incorporating torpedoes into revolving mounts on the main deck, rather than having them in fixed tubes within the hull. This would allow the torpedoes to be completely exposed, and in the event of explosions, the structural damage they would cause would be limited. The final test would involve 41 centimeter shells being fired at the ship, and since the armor was not installed, these were again focused at the torpedo defense system, and one shell took the cake. This shell would fall short of the ship, enter the water, penetrate the entirety of the torpedo defense system, and then detonate in an engine room, allowing around 3,000 tons of water to enter the ship, increasing its starboard list to 10 degrees. Now this is not a one-time experimental hit that the Japanese would score, as the disarmed battleship Aki was also being used for shelling experiments by the battlecruiser Congo and battleship Yuga, and the exact same hit was scored, which resulted in Aki sinking. Two things would emerge from those results. Armor-piercing shells would be given extended fuses so that 
should this happen in actual combat, their shells, though missing the target, would still have a chance of penetrating its lower hull and doing extensive damage, and the Japanese ships would now drop the torpedo bulkhead in favor of an extended armored bulkhead. However, this is where a significant design flaw pops up, and it was highly noted in the Yamato-class battleships, and this was the weak connection between the main armor belt and this underwater armor belt. Torpedoes striking high on the torpedo defense system of the Yamato class could cause the upper edge of the underwater belt to disconnect from the main armor belt and allow extensive flooding into primary machinery spaces of the ship, which would increase its list significantly far beyond calculated measures. Now, this is not to say that the Japanese did not take any lessons from the TOSA experiments, as in reality, they slightly ignored these when applying the torpedo defense system to the Yamatos, as they completely removed the liquid layer that they had developed for the torpedo defense systems that were applied to many other warships in their navy. What hurt the Yamatos in specific is the Japanese looked at the torpedo bulkhead, since it was 200 millimeters thick, and they regarded that thickness as adequate in stopping expanding gases from torpedoes and mines, rather than allowing a liquid layer to cushion these instead, and this ended up playing against them. This is where too much emphasis was placed on shell hits compared to torpedo and mine hits. Even considering the issues with the Yamato's torpedo defense system, across the board, the Japanese designers learned well from the TOSA experiments, and, as a whole, the Navy had improved underwater protection systems against all possible threats. With results in hand, the TOSA's time as a targeting ship had expired, and on the 9th of February 1925, the Japanese officially scuttled the ship, and it remains undiscovered today. With that having been said, that is all I have to say on this topic for today. So, if you have enjoyed this video, why not leave a like and a comment down below? Have a wonderful day.